The next thing is our camera. In the camera, now this one is going to change depending on the settings that you have on the camera. Right now, I have it set up as photos. I'm going to show you here. If I go tap right here, I can see that I have photos, single, 48 megapixel, smart, and all that. So I'm going to stay in single and uh, go back to my settings. So here I have my photo, a uh, format JPEG, size 69 or 4 third. I'm uh, old school, I like the 4 third format. So then I can actually crop it to 69 if I need to. This menu at the bottom here does actually not change if you have a different mode. So I'm gonna show you here. Uh, if I go to switch to the video mode and then we go to the settings, then you can see that the top part changed to video with our format or color or, or coding format, but the histogram is still here and the, all the other warnings. Uh, what we have in here, I'm going to stick with this and then I'll go back to the, uh, the other menu on top. So the next thing would be our histogram and we have our histogram right here. And if you turn that on and the histogram shows up, you can actually drag it with your hand and then just move around right here. And, um, and I would put it in a corner here because then it's not really in the way of anything. Now, uh, I'm in manual mode right now. I'm going to switch off of that. Uh, now you can see the histogram is kind of changing. And uh, if you don't know how the histogram works, uh, I can uh, <laughs> take a photography class. It basically shows you if you're exposed correctly. I really like having it in here. Um, I wish you could make it a little bit bigger. It's kind of big in the screen right here, but it's always really useful. I'm going to turn that off. And then I'm going to go back to show you the um, exposure warning. I'm going to turn that off. Here's our exposure warning right here. And uh, you see the zebra. That's what we call the zebra. As your exposure is overexposed, I have too much light on this thing right here. Then what we have is you can see all the zebra shows up in here. The next thing is our AutoSync HD photos. If we do this, then the photos are going to sync directly to our phone. Uh, that's really up to you if you want to use that or not. Uh, I personally don't. I like to just use the card to offload my photos, but that's an option that you can have. And then we have our grid line. Now you can turn grid line on or off and all of them at once. We have just the center dot right here. So you can see the cross right in the middle of the screen. We can add a grid, okay, your, your one third, your third roll right here, one third, two third, and then we have a cross like this. You can have all of them on or you can just have one of them on if you decide. Um, I do like the cross, but I don't like having it on the drone all the time, so I'm just usually turn this off. And then we have our white balance for the camera. We can do it automatic, let the camera control. I do not recommend automatic white balance just because the camera is not always smart enough to figure out exactly what the white balance is going to be. I like to have mine set just like my other cameras. Now we're in my studio. My studio is actually set at uh, 5,500 uh, Kelvin for the light. All the lights are 5,500. Uh, actually, as I take that back, it's 5,000. Uh, 5,000 Kelvin. So. I can set all my cameras at 5000 Kelvin and then it's nice and easy. So I usually have it on manual. When I fly outside, I usually have it as a uh, uh, 5500, 65. It depends on the light outside, but you can change that right in here. And then we have how to uh, manage where the storage location is for the images. Now I have a SD card in there that I can fill. Uh, it's, a, it's a 64 gig, uh, 59 gig available right here. And then we have the internal storage of the drone in itself, which is eight gigabytes, uh, 5.4 available right now. You can also format each of the cards individually, or you can format everything if you wanted to right here and just push format. I recommend that when you put a new card in there that you format it just so it's formatted to the camera in itself. And then we have our cache. Now the cache is going to be uh, what is recorded on your uh, mobile device as you record footage. So if you ever lose your drone, then there's gonna be a low quality version of your flight that's gonna be recorded on your cell phone. Uh, this is useful if you're gonna be flying in an area where you may lose your drone, hopefully you don't, but uh, there's always something recorded there. So you can set the size of the cache. Uh, you can put, go from two gigs all the way to automatic. Uh, I like to keep it low. I don't really use the cache all that much, uh, but I do have like to have it available just in case something happens, then at least I have the some of the footage available in here. 
So let's go back. I wanted to go back up right here because as I said, this whole section up here basically is divided into photos and videos and these settings are going to change depending on uh, how we change the camera settings. So right now I am set right here, you can see in uh, video mode. I'm gonna go back to photo just so you can see it. Um, so in photo mode here, and then I go to my settings, I have JPEG and JPEG plus RAW. If you wanna save your files as RAW, which I do recommend. I mean, uh, if you don't need them, just delete them. And then we have the size for third and 169. Uh, again, that's really up to you what you wanna do here. That's really the only two options we have here for photos. If we go back and switch to the next mode, which is the 48 megapixel camera here, then in the 48 megapixel, you will see that there's a JPEG and a JPEG RAW, but we can only do the photo in four third format. There is no other option. If we move to the smart photo right here and go to the settings, then we are back to our JPEG, JPEG plus RAW, and in four third and 169. And if we go to our auto exposure, we can do three photos or five photos, okay? Um, so. In this case, the camera would take a picture properly exposed, underexposed, and overexposed. And again, the settings are pretty much the same in the camera settings. And then for our burst, burst you can do three, five, or seven photos in a row very quickly. In this case, we also have the same options in here. And then lastly, we have our time shot, and that's gonna be a timer that's gonna start, so we can do a photo after two seconds, one, two, and now it takes the picture, and you can see that it keeps taking pictures until you stop it. So this is actually good if you wanted to do your own time lapse and really just do a time lapse on your uh, on your own. You can do every two seconds, three seconds, and five seconds, and then you can even go all the way to every 60 seconds. When we go to the video mode in itself, video mode here, if we look at our settings, we have MPEG-4 or MOV. Now, quite frankly, the difference between the two is it's really the same container. It's just a different extension on the file. Uh, so I do MPEG-4 just because that's what I'm used to doing, but you could really do whatever you want. Then we have our color. Now you can see on my thing right here, we can see the, the different colors on the top of my clapper. And if we go right here, d like this is gonna be your dynamic range a little bit more. And you can see that the colors are more fitted. This is what you would use if you wanted to apply a lot to your, um, to your process. I'm gonna go back to normal. And then we have H.264 or H.265 for your codec. Uh, you want to use H.265 if your computer can handle it. Otherwise, H.264 is kind of the, uh, the older but more standard uh, codec that you have in here. Anti-flicker, this is going to be if you're using uh, special lights uh, that are on the on indoor lights, I should say. This is all going to be based on the frequency of these lights. 50 hertz is what you would use if you are in Europe and um, other countries. 60 hertz would be what you use in the US. So uh, you can leave it on auto. I'm not sure how it decides between the two, but it's going to set the frequency so that you don't have a flicker on the image. If you turn that off, then you may get a flicker. Now I'm not using this kind of lights in, uh, in my office, in my studio, so you won't see any results here, but um, just leave it on auto and let it kind of be its own little thing. So the next thing in here would be our video subtitles. And if you click right here, then uh, you don't really see anything happening, but if you started to record a video right here, then what's gonna happen is that uh, later on in the card, we are going to find a SRT file. SRT is a subtitle file. Now there's not, it's not really the subtitles for what I'm saying right now. It's actually gonna be uh, kind of like an EXIF file that you would find on the, uh, on the photo where it's gonna give you information about the flight. Now because the drone is in my studio, I don't have GPS reception right now, but it would give you GPS location, it would give you altitude, it would give you a whole bunch of stuff that you can read afterwards so uh, you could basically see what was happening with your flight. So that's what the subtitle uh, section is and uh, you can turn it on or turn it off right here. And then go back into our video mode. Now if you change the video mode, you will see that the settings in here are pretty much staying the same except a few things that are changing. For example, here we cannot change 
in HDR, we can only be flying in normal uh, color mode, not with the cine-like uh, cinema -like, uh, setting that we had before. And we have our slow motion right here. Slow motion, again, if you go back, you can do the cine-like, and then you can go back to the same settings that we had before. So some of these modes do not have the, uh, the fancy settings and all the different settings that we have on the, uh, on the other modes otherwise. In terms of the quick shot, what we have is the quick shot settings are only available when you fly. If you go to the settings right here, you see that you have more options. You can do your quick shots in different quality, different formats. Actually, all the options are available on top of the resolution in itself. And uh, if we change the quick shots, you will see that really the settings remain the same. So it doesn't matter what quick shot you're using. Um, if we cancel the quick shots and we go to hyperlapse, in hyperlapse, there's also its own setting. You do have to be in flight in order to change those. You can do a hyperlapse in 1080p, in 8K, which is not an option that we have otherwise. Now, I want you to notice something that in 1080p right here, in the hyperlapse, if I go to 1080p, you notice that the interval right here, the smallest interval I can do is two seconds, okay? Every two seconds. So it's going to take a picture every two seconds. If I go to the 8K option right here, all right? Now you notice in the 8K what we have is, if we look right here, we have every six seconds. Just because in 8K it's gonna use a lot more pixels and collect a lot more pixels, it takes a lot longer to actually uh, get in there. And so what we have as a result is uh, to store that information on the camera, it takes a little bit more time. You can also add the option right here of the shot frame. And that's going to have those little um, tick marks in the corner here to kind of show you what the final image is going to look like. This option is also available in 1080p right here. And you can see you can turn that on or off and it removes the little ticker in the corner. All right. And finally, we have our panoramic mode. And in the panoramic mode, what we have is you have JPEG off or you can actually just do off completely, JPEG or RAW, you can do off completely. So it's actually not going to record all the images, it's just gonna give you the final image. And uh, if you record each of the JPEG, then each of the images is gonna show in the card at the very end. And you can do it manually if you wanted to in Photoshop. Otherwise, if you turn it off, then uh, you don't get those images and you just get the final image that has been stitched by the camera in itself. And you notice as well, all these options are the same regardless of what you select in here. So, uh, so that's what we have. This is what we have for our camera settings. Some of these, like I said, you have to be up in the air flying like I am right now in order to see these settings.